Lorraine. <laughs> we were just talking about kid cooties and and NyQuil and all of that. And it's just like caught me right there. But Lorraine, I am so happy to have you on the podcast. We got introduced by a good friend of ours, a mutual friend, and hit it off. And I said, you've got to come on the podcast, talk about all things formulating, um, which is such an important topic in our industry. We have so many estheticians that go down that path. So for those of, of our listeners that don't know who you are, or what you do, can you give us kind of your background and your company in a nutshell? And then we'll go down all the different paths. That sounds great. First of all, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I am so happy to be here. I'm really looking forward to this chat. So I'm Lorraine Dahlmeyer. I am the CEO of Formula Botanica, and we are the online organic cosmetic formulation school. So we teach people how to create their own natural botanical skincare, hair care, a little bit of makeup in there as well. And we've been teaching now for over 10 years. We have over 17 and a half thousand students at the moment and graduates in 182 countries, which blows my mind when I think about it because we're global. And we have been instrumental in the launch of, of thousands of brands, indie beauty brands, because we've taught formulators and then taught them how to start a business. Um, so, so I'm based in the UK. All um, the estheticians are just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this woman. <laughs> it's such a, you have so much knowledge um, of this topic, which is so interesting. And, and especially over COVID, you know, we saw, I'm sure your company felt as well, this like, surge in people wanting to create these additional streams of revenue. And, yeah. and I love that, um, you know, I know you've been doing it for 10 years. I love that you have this focus on organic ingredients on natural. Like you said, your whole podcast, you talk a lot about, um, you were last time we talked, you were saying you're doing one about, you know, the plastics that are in ingredients and you yeah. just, just this knowledge that is so vitally important for us to know as consumers, as professionals in what we're recommending to our clients. So how did, how did you get into this in the first place? Oh, that's a good question. So I was actually one of Formula Botanica's first ever students. I was okay. on maternity leave and I decided that I wanted to start my own business because that's what you do when you have a newborn baby, right? <laughs> So I was watching the BBC's Apprentice and I I was sleep deprived out of my mind with my young baby feeding him on the sofa. And I thought, you know what, if these idiots can do it, then so can I. So I decided I was going to make my own iPhone app. So I did. I hired a company in India and I decided I was going to do an app around DIY beauty. So I created this DIY beauty app in my sleep deprivation, launched it. Um, by the time I actually went back to, from maternity leave, you get a year off in the UK. And um, it did really well. It was downloaded in like over 100 countries around the world. It got featured in lots of different publications. And then I thought, what's next? What do I do now? So I thought, I'm going to start my own skincare brand. And by that point, I um, I was pregnant with my second child. So I went for it, started to design my formulations, You know, design the logo, the labels, the packaging. And I found a small school online or a, more, a small course online, I should say, that I took to teach me how to formulate. And I threw myself into it, loved it. And at that point, obviously gave birth to my second child. And I was sat there in our teeny tiny house thinking, how am I going to do this with a baby and a toddler? <laughs> I have no idea how I will fit this in the kitchen. And it's not hygienic because there's just stuff everywhere. And I thought, you know what, I can always wait a couple of years. And then I thought, hang on a minute, I've got this incredible opportunity here to take over this school because the person who started it didn't want to continue with it. It was just like a one woman side hustle, you know, with a few hundred, a couple of hundred students and a couple of courses. And so I bought it lock, stock and barrel and threw myself into it. And it was supposed to be my little side hustle hobby business. I was going to run for like an hour a day. So I did that. And within four months, I'd quit my job, thrown myself into it. And here we are now, almost nine years later, and I have 40 staff. Changing the world. Yeah. <laughs> we have like, I don't do it as a hobby anymore. You know, it's not like an hour a day. I work on this full time. And it's incredible. Yeah, it's grown phenomenally in that time. So that's my sort of history of how I got into it. So with, you know, a lot of the, the estheticians here, they'll go to um, like UCLA has a cosmetic chemistry course or different things like that. So tell me a little bit more about 
what you guys are actually teaching in formulations? Is it like cosmetic chemistry? Is it like, how are we differentiating what you guys are doing from what someone would learn at like a college course or something like that? Because you are a university, right? Or a, a school. We're an online school. Yeah. And we don't teach cosmetic chemistry. We teach cosmetic formulation and there's a fine difference. So we're not, you're not going to like dive deep into the chemistry when you come and study with us. And what's interesting is when you look at the big brands, they also have cosmetic chemists and cosmetic formulators and they do different things in the lab. So we're training people up how to make their own formulations from scratch. And we're only using natural ingredients, which you will never get when you go to a cosmetic chemistry college or qualification at a university there it will just be the whole spectrum natural synthetic everything in between so we're just focused on those naturals those botanicals and yeah we train people up how to make their own different skincare formulations from scratch so we'll teach them how to understand their ingredients how to layer them how to calculate percentages how to create a formulation using what we call frame formulations so we'll teach you how to make let's say a facial cleanser, a foaming cleanser, for example, and we'll show you, you need roughly between this amount and this amount of a surfactant. You need roughly between this amount and this amount of a water-based ingredient, such as distilled water or a hydrosol. And then we send people off on their way and they have to then go and find their own ingredients that they like the sound of, having followed our examples first, and create their own formulations from scratch. So we're training up people to create their own products that fit their own ethos, their own ingredient interests. And that means that everyone who's come out of our courses has created something different, which has been really exciting to watch. So are you guys also teaching, it's essentially removing the lab, right? Like if you're wanting to start your own line. Mm. So are you teaching anything about stability testing or, you know, packaging and all of that stuff as well? Yeah, we teach all about cosmetic compliance. We teach about uh, regulations in terms of claims you can can and can't make. We teach about natural cosmetic preservation, um, how to um, comply with good manufacturing practice requirements, cosmetic stability testing. We have a whole course on that. So yeah, we we cover all of the, the sort of more regulatory sides of things as well. But people all want to start with making their own cleansers and balms and moisturizers. And then once they have the basics under their belt, they can start to specialize in those more advanced advanced or niche topics. So do you feel like most of your students, they're coming in to do this because they're interested in it themselves, or they're actually wanting to establish a business where I know you said you've been a part of so many different product lines being created. Um, but I imagine it's more than just estheticians or skincare professionals or beauty therapists, as you guys call them over there. Um, you know, to, to be learning this skill. It's anyone who has an interest Like you don't, you can be a complete beginner and come to us, but I will say that almost everyone who comes to us wants to start their own business. There is an absolute boom at the moment in the indie sector. I think people have seen that there are gaps in the market um, that aren't being filled by the big brands. That's why so many indie brands have done so very well and are now, of course, being bought out by the big brands. So most people come to us with a dream of becoming an um, excuse me, post-COVID. They come to us with a dream of becoming a beauty entrepreneur and starting their own product range. And are you guys, um, that's so cool, by the way. Um, are you guys teaching marketing and launching and like all how to get bought by one of these big brands as well, (laughs) like all of that kind of stuff, like from A to Z, or are you, your main specialty, I imagine is all in the formulation. Yeah. Most people just stick with the formulation, but we do have a specialist business diploma. I call it, uh, lovingly call it our Indie Beauty MBA. And so that will take you through literally everything in terms of branding, manufacturing, financing, costing, pricing, marketing, distribution, retail, sales, PR, all of it. Oh, wow. That's so cool. (laughs) That is so cool. Um, And this, when we're talking about um, regulations and all of that, how does that differ from country to country? Because I imagine that there are ingredients that are okay in certain countries and not okay in others. Um, How do you teach that or break that down? 
That is a very good question. Um, yes, we uh, obviously cosmetic regulations around the world differ wildly. Like here in the um, UK, Europe, EU area, I'm sorry, I'm floundering because of Brexit. I always used to say here in the EU and I can't do that anymore and it really frustrates me. So here <laughs> in Europe, <laughs> we have really high standards of cosmetic regulations, whereas in the US, it's, it's a lot um, dare I say it, weaker. Um, in fact, occasionally I look at it and I f- it feels like a bit of a wild west at times. We are the wild west over here. It's okay. You can say <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't think the regulations in the US have been updated since the 30s, actually. So they're in dire need of a refresh, which I know has been, the people have been trying to push something through for years, but it hasn't been working. And then you've got, you know, like Japan is really high. And for instance, you know, the regulations in Nigeria, maybe only a couple of pages long. So it varies hugely from country to country. And what we've done is we've taken the strictest ones in the world and those are the ones we teach everyone because imagine you come to us and you want to start a brand and you want to sell eventually worldwide I mean we see this with quite a lot of our graduates they might end up selling products in 35 40 45 50 countries around the world and if you're going to do that you have to be compliant with the regulations in those countries by the time you get to that stage you don't want to find yourself like five years down the road about to sell ship your palette of toners to wherever it is you're going to then discover that you're not compliant so we always say comply with the highest standards and then you're ready to sell anywhere in the world Plus, I have to say the highest standards are good. They're there for a reason and they will help protect you and your business and your formulation and your customer. So that's the way we go about it. And so we tend to, well, we teach everyone the EU standard, which is higher than than most other countries around the world. And yes, there are some nuances. I mean, you mentioned ingredients. Typically, when it comes to natural ingredients, they're not quite so controversial. They don't tend to end up on banned lists or anything like that unless they have a very specific effect on the skin. Like there are certain natural skin lightening ingredients that have regulatory requirements and restrictions on them. But generally, with natural ingredients, you're pretty okay. So tell me, tell me one of your favorite success stories from one of your students. Oh my goodness, I have so many. But uh, let me pick one uh, in the US. One of our graduates is called Sandra and she started a brand called Nopalera in November 2020. And maybe some of your listeners have even heard of her because she is she is one to watch. I recommend everyone go and find her on Instagram and follow her. So she launched her brand um, in the pandemic, in lockdown. She studied with us in 2020, kept her head down. We hardly heard from her. We weren't even really aware of her presence. We have students like that. Zipped through the course and then thought, right, I'm launching. November 2020. And she uh, is Mexican. She lives in New York. And she kept being, she was making soaps at that time. And she kept being told, I'm not paying $14 for a soap because it's Mexican and therefore it's cheap. I mean, what a way to devalue someone's culture, right? What a horrible thing to say. So she thought, you know what, I'm going to change this. And she started to tell people, actually, I'm proud of my heritage and I'm going to create a a Latina brand that really lifts up my heritage. So she created this brand called Nopalera. It's all about the nopal cactus. And she's even got the little cactus symbol in her logo. And she has cactus oil, the nopal oil in all of her formulations. I want to find her now. (laughs) Oh, yeah. She's so cool. And she's really inspirational as an entrepreneur as well. She does a lot of work outside of her brand. I don't know when she sleeps. But she, she launched. And by month two, she had to move into commercial premises to keep up with demand. I mean, this is an exceptional story. This is not the norm, but she is a powerhouse. By month three, she was stocked by 50 retailers across the US. And now obviously she's been going for a year and a half. She's in Nordstrom. I think she has like 200 different retailers. She very publicly and openly shared that she um, generated half a million dollars in revenue in her first year. Good Just for her. I'm looking at her brand right now and it's so beautiful. It's just stunning. She is, and she's a natural with branding on her Instagram. Oh yeah. But it's her heritage as well. And that means it really sings. You know, you look at it and you go, I understand what you stand for because you live and breathe it. And that's the example of a brand that will stand the test of time. And I have no doubt she'll be a household name in like five years at the rate she's going. She's raising that's funding it. at the moment. I have no doubt she'll be raising millions. Good for her. I love that. Yeah. So- what advice would you give to, because we're, who's listening here is spa industry professionals, right? These are 
estheticians, um, most of our, a lot of our estheticians transition out of the room, end up running spas, hiring teams, et cetera. So is this a path that you think is a good path? You know, I, I imagine if they're creating their own brand, it would be profitable, right? To yeah. be able, much more profitable on their bottom line to be able to distribute. Yeah. I mean, this is like even more than their own private label. This is their own, they're the manufacturer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I have watched many estheticians and salon and spa owners join us over the years and do exactly that. It's, I mean, creating your own formulations means you know exactly what's in it, which is not always the case. I mean, you're often sent products and then you have all the marketing education material with it, but that doesn't mean you truly understand what's in the product itself. And it means you can create something that's specifically tailored to your customer's desires and needs. So we have a graduate in in Copenhagen, actually, in Denmark, and she has a four-story beauty salon there. And she does all these treatments, a lot of waxes, brow treatments, intimate area, that sort of thing. And she, she, when I met with her back in 2015, 2016, she said to me, I'm using all these products by big brands and I don't really truly know what's in them. So that's why I've enrolled with you. And she launched her brand, uh, Naughty Alchemist, a few years ago. Again, go check her out. Her branding is, is beautiful. I and love so the she, name. <laughs> so cool. She actually has her formulation lab in her salon and she has these glass doors on the outside. So when people come for their treatments, they walk past the formulation lab and she has, I think she has like 20 staff or something. So they're doing the treatments and she's just in the formulation lab making her, her herbal preparations. But she has like a brow serum. She has an intimate area oil. Like she's making formulations that her team can use in the treatments they're performing. And I think that is so cool. And she's done so well with it. I'm super proud of her. That's incredible. Now from a, a, you know, my mind is going right to, well, what happens if there's a reaction, right? Because a lot of times my my training has always been in the medical aesthetics world. And so any of the physician dispensed brands that we carry, if someone has a reaction, we file a report, we send it to the company. Like as your brand gets bigger, how are you dealing with those types of issues? Are you just bringing in your own legal team? Like how does that work? It depends a little bit where you are in the world. I mean, anyone can have a reaction to any ingredient. I think that's a really important thing to put out there. I know people who react to rose water and aloe vera, which to many of us wouldn't be an issue, um, wouldn't be an ingredient that we would think would trigger a reaction. Um, typically, when you have a reaction it's and you are the formulator, particularly if you're using it in your own salon or spa, it's, I mean, obviously there's a whole customer service component around that, which is not something I specialize in, but you have to do proper batch recording. And that's very mm. simple. It means that when you create a batch of formulations, you label them, you list exactly which ingredients go into it. You list exactly which methods you use, which suppliers you use for the ingredients. You effectively have a whole paper trail that you can show back, take back to see exactly what happened and what may have triggered it. Um, I mean, a lot of formulation is about paperwork, which <laughs> can be a little bit dry and boring, but you have to cover yourself by making sure that you have documented everything correctly and that you have stability tested your batches, which can be very simple and can be done in-house, but that you know exactly what went into that formulation. You have the records to show it and you can follow it through if something happens. So give me an idea of the investment. If someone's wanting to start a product line for their own spa, um, you know, with just, and I know this is going to range based on the ingredients they're using. There's so many variables, but an idea of what is it going to take to really get started to formulate even just one SKU? Yeah. Well, if you start with one and we do very much recommend that our students start small, like if it's not one, then I would start with like three. I have watched people launch like 30 products over the years. And then I just sit there and go, I really feel for you because that must be so painful. I think it varies hugely. I mean, obviously you've touched on this already. I've seen students who've launched with $500, a couple of thousand dollars. I've also watched students launch with tens of thousands of dollars of investment behind them. It depends a little bit, I think in particular on things like the branding, because if you want to launch something Packaging, that really, stings, probably. it needs to look good. 
And I think if you're going to be quite, you know, homespun about it, that can actually hamper you in the long run. But if you are an esthetician, you may already have a brand and it could go under your name and your skincare range could carry your name, which could hold even more weight because presumably you're, you then already have a customer base. So the main expense often sits in the branding and marketing, and that's an initial outlay. Um, but the formulation itself doesn't have to cost a huge amount to start with. That's wonderful. So what are the main things that someone should know? You know, if it's like the five things I wish I knew before I started my line for people that are kind of on the fence and thinking, what what are the things that I haven't asked that they should be thinking about if they're wanting to go down this route? I think the main thing that everyone needs to think about is how their product is going to somehow, I say this a lot, but change their customer's life. And that can be in a teeny tiny way. It doesn't have to be like a complete game changer. But if you have something that people really want, then they'll come back for it. And the biggest mistake I watch people make is that they always make skincare products for themselves. They're not necessarily considering their customers. Whereas an esthetician or a spa owner, they should know their customers pretty intimately and have a really good idea of what they'd be looking for. The beauty market can seem crowded and it is in certain niches because almost everyone makes skincare for women between the ages of like 30 and 40, because that's where they think the the sort of real money sits. And yet there are whole you know, groups of people who are neglected by the beauty industry. Just as an example, you know, if you look at people who are slightly older, maybe in their 70s, 80s, 90s, they're completely uncated for, but that's just one example of many. So you really have to know who it is you're targeting and it, and how you're going to change their life. And that could be through making them feel better about themselves or making their skin or hair feel better in some way, saving them time, maybe protecting them from something like anti-pollution skincare, that sort of thing. So I think that's the big, big thing um, that I want everyone to keep in mind if they're going to go down this route. I think the other thing really is to is to have a strong brand. Because as I said, if you have a strong brand, that's half the step, that's half the way there to getting someone to buy your products. So there's a lot of very generic business points, really, because once you've learned how to formulate, you effectively have all the products you need and you just have to package them up in a way that people really love them and want to buy them from you. So if you can figure out that life changing angle and also that branding angle, there's nothing stopping you. I love that. All right. So tell us again where people can find you, follow you, stay in touch with you, learn more about your programs, all those things. Absolutely. We are at formulabotanica.com and we are at Formula Botanica on pretty much every platform, mainly on Instagram. Come and follow us there. You can also follow me at Lorraine Dalmeyer. And we have a free online formulation course to start off anyone who's completely new. And it runs you through how to classify your skincare ingredients. We show you how to make a really simple body butter with like four ingredients. Show you how to set up your little home formulation lab. It's great fun. So come and join us. That's just on the main page on the website. Wonderful. All right. We'll link all that up below this video. Lorraine, thank you so much for your time. This is wonderful. I know so many of our listeners are just going to be, you know, they're all the little alchemists themselves. I love, (laughs) you know, playing with ingredients and solving problems. So this has really been great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. 